Good morning. <laughs> so I was excited to do today's welcoming speech, if you will. Um, <laughs> so all of today's songs begin with the letter or the word I. Um, and throughout this week, I was just trying to come up with so many different things that could fit today's theme. Um, but I got in today and I don't know, just everything that I wrote down, I don't know, it just didn't seem to fit. So I just decided to let the spirit move and what I came up with this morning is when we go to God, keeping in, in mind this word I, when we go to God, we often go to him with about our problems or Lord, what, Lord, can you help me with this? Lord God, I have this issue, I need this. And what if we started thinking about, Lord, what can I do to love you more? What can I do to serve you more? And I've been, a moment of vulnerability, I've been so exhausted. But before this week, Mr. C, he told, he was just speaking, I forget to who else, but he said, he asked God, Lord, am I exhausted? And I asked God the same thing. And the funny thing is, I didn't hear a response. But sometimes that is the response. The response is that his silence is, Amen. is kind of letting us know we already know the answer. And so <laughs> in his silence, I just decided, okay, I'm going to keep going until he speaks. Amen. And <laughs> and it really makes you realize the, what God has put inside of you. So as we begin worship, um, just... Just, just ask him, what can I do to serve you, Lord? Hallelujah. How can I pour into you? Yes. We're going to sing this song, I Believe. It's new. We're going to join in. One, two, three, One way that leads to life, one redemption, one confession. I believe in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe in the crucifixion. By his blood I have been set free. I believe in the resurrection. Hallelujah, his life is just defeat. All praise to God the Father. All praise to Christ the Son. All praise to the Holy Spirit. Our God has overcome the King who was in. Ears I've heard or what eyes have seen. I believe that a day is coming. He's returning to claim his bride. Light the altar, keep it burning. See the Lamb who rose a roaring lion. All praise to God the Father. All praise to Christ the Son. All praise to the Holy Spirit.
to sing that chorus just one more time. It's a very intimate, intimate time of worship. And as Destiny was saying earlier, the word today is I. It takes two in any relationship. And a wise person once told me, look at what can I do? What can I do? Don't worry about what the other person's doing or not doing. What can I do? How can I surrender? How can I believe? How can I pour out my heart so I can go deeper in the things of the Lord Jesus? So just sing that chorus one more time, Destiny, just nice and softly. may be seated. You may be seated. Ah, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. There's a lot of people I want to give a hug right now. Seth was right there, so I could I could I could hug him real quick. 
Um, wow. So good to be with you all. Um, that was a very intimate song. And to be honest with you, the very first time I heard it was like right before today. I had never heard the song before in my life. And um, I was listening to that song and just it, 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 I was gone. I was gone. The Lord took me somewhere. I don't know where, but somewhere where he was, that's where I was. And that's all that mattered to me. So it's amazing uh, to see you all. And God's going to do something absolutely special today. I don't think you heard me. God's going to do something absolutely amazing today. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? All right. Let's jump right in. Because we miss Bible study, so we got some catching up to do. <laughs> so, before I begin, as we were talking before, and Destiny was talking about I, and Mr. C was talking about I, you know, we hear the word I, and we sometimes we think of the word pride because the way, the context of which I is used is, you know, I need this, I want this, I got to do this, I got to, whatever the case may be. And we think, ah, if you're using the word I, that's pride. But can I just expose the spirit of false humility today? Let's, let's just expose the spirit of false humility. There are people that say the, the Bible is, is not about you, it's about God. But let me tell you this. Does God need the Bible or do you? Ah, I don't think you heard me. Does God need the Bible or do you? I. 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 See, you got to be careful now. You got to be careful. Because we get caught up in what sounds correct and what sounds good and it sounds right but uh, let's go a little bit deeper because if the Bible isn't for God then it must be for me it must be for you and when you use the word I it's always an opportunity to point back at yourself doesn't matter what the situation is doesn't matter what it is that you've come against, come under, come above. Doesn't matter if you're at a boss or an employee. It does not matter. The ability to always look in the mirror and say, what can I do? And oh, by the way, what can I not do? <laughs> Sometimes the hardest thing to do is nothing. Sometimes the absolutely hardest thing to do is absolutely nothing. Because your flesh wants to do the most. And God is like, eh. Like PG talked about last week. The fruit of what? Patience. And a lot of times that means I hold back. Hold back. Hold back. And the person that helps us in this area is the Holy Spirit. So today we're going to be talking about impressions of the Spirit. Impressions of the Spirit. If you've noticed somewhat of a theme, whether it be... Um, Officer Frankie, Pastor Gloria, Mr. C, or myself speaking, there's always this like subtle, consistent theme of 
hearing what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. But let me ask you a question. What's the point of hearing the Spirit, but we don't know what to do with it after we hear? What about that part? What about the understanding? What about the wisdom? So today I'm going to teach just for a little bit. I'm not going to take much time on impressions of the Spirit because there are actually most of you, if not all of you here, you've already heard something. And what I'm going to teach you today is hopefully going to help you uh, to put the eye back in the situation. What can I do? How can I react? How can I respond? How can I get out of the way? Are you with me so far? All right. So the scriptures I got today, John 14, 26, Galatians 3, 5, Hebrews 3, 7, 11, and Hebrews 4, 1 to 2. Uh, I hope there are some people that are going to volunteer to read. I'm going to probably volunteer you if I don't hear anybody. Um, and we're going to just jump right in. So let's go to the first one. I'm going to bring the mic over to uh, Seth. You want to read that one? But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Teach you all things. Not some things, not one thing, not a couple of things, all things. And he'll bring to your remembrance, my remembrance, all that I, I as in Jesus, have said to you. Oh, see, only God can do this, Mr. C. Come on. <laughs> Only God can do this. Amen. Hallelujah. Sorry, we just got to take a moment there because when God does something, yes. it's uh, amazing and you just kind of have to acknowledge. Thank you, Lord. So he'll teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. Notice this. The Holy Spirit helps you to remember what Jesus said. Who is the word? I can't hear you. Jesus is the word. So when the word comes to you, when the word reveals himself to you, the job of the person, the Holy Spirit, is to bring to your remembrance what Jesus told you. Uh, we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. So capture this when the Holy Spirit speaks to you it's usually to remind you of something you already have in your spirit the word already came to you but the Holy Spirit will come around you he lives inside of you and he also comes to you to comfort you but to help to remind you of things that Jesus already told you. And he needs to remind you because if you're not reminded, if I'm not reminded, we miss God all together. This is why I think the fruit of patience is so important for us as believers because it's modeled by the person of the Holy Spirit to us. Are you hearing me? It's modeled by the person of the Holy Spirit to us on a day-to-day -day basis. This is why I'm going to teach you about impressions, what the Lord is teaching me, because we need to understand that there's wisdom in how the Holy Spirit will approach you. 
there's wisdom in how the Holy Spirit approaches you. Let me give you an example. Married folks in the house. You, you, you get in an argument with your spouse. Or maybe you're in a, a, in a relationship. Maybe you're engaged. And you get in an argument with your spouse. And you know, you're mad and your flesh is, is raging. But there's a part of you, you just get this impression. Ah, you know what? I could kill this whole argument right now by just saying I'm sorry. You know what? I could probably put this whole thing to bed by just, you know what? You know what, babe? You know, I kind of spoke a little harsh. You know, I, I probably could have uh, chose different words. It's an impression. You ever feel that? It's just like it, like in the heat of your anger, in the heat of your rage, ah, they don't understand me. There's like, oh, I could kill this whole thing right now. Bait and switch on the enemy. Woo! You have this impression. Let me give you another example. You ever lived in a house? Next thing you know, your, your spouse is complaining. Ah, you know, ah, you know, if we moved, I'd be okay with that. Wait, what? We, you know, we, 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 we like where we are. We, you know, don't you like this home? Don't you like? And you're kind of looking at your spouse crazy like, what are you talking about? I thought we were good here. And they're like, ah, I don't. And, and you know what? They can't even explain why. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? They can't even explain to you why they are feeling the way they're feeling. They they just like, you know what? I just I'm not I'm not feeling this. I'm not feeling this. Now, as I'm speaking, Destiny, you have your phone? Okay, look up the word impressions. Impression. I'm gonna read you to you the definition. This is all gonna make sense in a second. I don't have my phone with me. I'm going to read you the definition of impression. It's going to make sense to you what I'm saying. But your helper, the Holy Spirit, to whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Now, here's the definition of impression. Listen carefully. An idea, feeling, or opinion about something or someone especially one formed without conscious thought or on the basis of little evidence. Now, if I'm not mistaken, how many times has Mr. C stood before you and talked about something that he don't have a whole lot of evidence It's an impression. It's an impression. See, sometimes we're looking for the voice. Thank you, Destiny. I'm going to read that one more time. Impression. An idea, feeling, or opinion about something or someone, especially one formed without conscious, meaning this is something you do in your subconscious mind. You don't do this in your conscious mind. It's your subconscious. It's your subtle conscious. Or on the basis of little evidence. Thank you, Destiny. So there's an impression. God will use an impression to remind you. He will use an impression to remind you of what you're supposed to do. You ever get in a situation and you're going this way and, on, and all of a sudden, I don't know why I feel like we need to change course. And people almost looking at you crazy like, what are you trying to, why are you going over? I'm like, and you actually don't have an answer. Like it's little evidence. I don't know why I feel this, you know, I just... This is why it's so important to have a clear conscience. 
Listen to me. It's very, very, very important. Why do you think the emphasis on renewing your mind is so important? God is about to show you something. The reason why it's so important to have a clear conscience is because impressions of the spirit is of no effect if your mind is full of filth. Can somebody hear me? It's of no effect. Why? Because if your mind is full of garbage, if your mind is full of bitterness, self-condemnation, self-doubt, I'm just going to settle. If you're feeding off of these things, this is going to be hard for you. I'm sorry. Like, like very hard for you. Because a clear conscience, we, we talk about, we, and you maybe you've prayed this prayer before. Lord, I want to hear you clearly. I want to hear you clearly. God spoke clearly. What did you do? Ah. God only speaks clearly. Let me say that one more time. God only speaks clearly. What are we doing? We need to clear our mind. If you don't remember anything from this teaching today, clear your mind. Purify your mind. Open up your mouth and begin to cast down thoughts and ideas that you know are from the enemy. Open up your mouth rebuke it speak against it notice i'm giving you step by step now cast it down get out of my mind get out of my life you don't belong here you're alive from the pit of hell go back to where you came from you need to be violent sometimes because the battle is in your mind it's in your mind it's not out there it's in here can somebody hear me you need to open up your mouth and speak against the lie. So now you can open up the pipeline for this to happen. For that remembrance to happen. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Meaning if your mind's not re renewed, you forget about transformation. Impossible. Here's something the Lord is, 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 is teaching me. You don't want to know why sometimes seasons last so long? There's a deeper aspect of renewal that needs to take place still. I'm just being real with you. Trust me, I've ex <laughs> I'm experiencing this as we speak. There's a deeper aspect of renewal of this thing that needs to happen. Why do you think that uh, there's a huge emphasis on this ministry on the spiritual and the mental? You can't expect to war against the things that are coming against God in your own house if you're not taking care of the spiritual, mental, and physical aspect of you. How effective can you be in the fight when, 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 when you're bloated? Uh, you know, you know what's funny? I always find this interesting. Right around New Year's, you know what the biggest, the biggest thing that we come up against? There's so much food everywhere. There's so much food. Notice, even food, too much of it, you become spiritually dull. You're supposed to be spending time in prayer and fasting to get clarity on what you're supposed to do for the next year. But you're bloated. Ah, you know, ah, let me have another piece of pie. Ah, you, you. Listen, I'm speaking to myself just as much as anybody else. Is this making sense to anybody? Ah, see, we, 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 we do these things and we think it's just natural. There's a spiritual element. What you see is just a mirror. It's just a mirror of the spiritual realm. Ah, God is going to reveal things that are happening around you. Let's go to the next one. 
Thank you, Lord. Galatians 3, 5. Does he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing faith? One more time. Does he who supplies the spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith? You know, let's break it down. Let's break it down. God the Father, Jesus, they sent the Spirit to you. The Spirit of the living God works miracles among you. But is this happening because of your works? Or by hearing with faith. You know, I always find that interesting when the Bible says those who have an ear, let them hear. But everybody on the planet has ears. So what is God really saying? Do you have ears in here? And is this clear to receive what you heard in here? Notice, miracles, the Holy Spirit works miracles, not by works, by faith. Here's an impression of the Spirit that is very important for us to notice. Because, and I, and I, I love, we were having this conversation earlier, it's our default to want to control things. It just is. We, we're, as humans, our flesh we want to control things. We do. We absolutely do. One of the hardest things to do is to be obedient when you hear the word by faith, and that word is to get out of the way. Let it die, Josh. But they're going to look at me as if I'm not being a good steward. Let it go. Let it die. It's, it, that part's done. Let me take care of that. Let it go. Let it go. It's so interesting. It's such an odd place to be. I'm, be. I'm being dead serious with you. It's such an odd place to be in obedience to the word that you heard from the Lord when that word is not just contrary to your flesh, but it's also contrary. Now hear me. It's also contrary to to what you think is the spirit. Ah, some of you are not getting it. Meaning, you'll, re you'll go in the Bible, you'll look for a verse, you'll have a problem. Ah, let me read, this is, you know, I have this problem, let me see what the Bible has to say about it. Nothing wrong with doing that, by the way. But if you approach it without the spirit of God, you will miss God altogether. You'll read a verse, thinking that it applies to your situation. But there's an impression like, ah, I feel like I'm still missing something. You ever feel that way? I don't have any evidence, but I feel like I'm missing something. Something's, ah, something's missing. Ah, like there's a couple of puzzle pieces that aren't there. And you're, you're doing works by the law. You're, okay, the Bible says to do this. Okay, do, okay, Bible says to do that, do that. You're not paying attention to what is the author saying. The impression. If the, let me ask you a question. If the Bible disappeared off the, the face of the planet today, what would you do? A day is coming, by the way, where it will be very hard to access any type of scriptures. What will you do? How will you live? How will you follow? Hello? Hello? You need to ask yourself that question. You need to ask yourself that question because the Holy Spirit is the one that teaches you all truth. All truth. 
So we have to clear this so that we can hear by faith. And if you're getting an impression, am I missing something? I don't know. Maybe you are. And maybe this is something that the Holy Spirit is trying to impress upon you. Impressions is one of the ways that the Holy Spirit speaks to you. I think that's going to help somebody because you've probably been experiencing expressions. But not sure if that was just you or what. This is going to help somebody. Because the Holy Spirit is impressing something upon you. And it's to bring to remembrance something that Jesus already spoke to you. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay, Hebrews 7, 3, 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. On the day of testing in the wilderness, where your fathers put me to the test and saw my works for 40 years. Stop right there. God's word is offensive, guys. Offensive to your flesh. Well, you know, I'm just going to leave this all in God's hands. And the Holy Spirit is saying, no, use that word, I. <laughs> oh, you thought you were going to get away with false humility. Okay. No, I'm about to show you something. Use that word, I. Point the fi finger back at yourself. And now it's whatever the Holy Spirit says. Sometimes it's get out of my way. Stand back and watch me work. Sometimes it's, all right, I need you to come to the front. I know this is very uncomfortable. I know you would rather run away. Fight or flight. I know you like to fly away most of the time. You're going to have to fight this one. Is this, is this bearing witness with anybody right now? Impressions. 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 Don't harden your hearts when the Holy Spirit speaks. He's trying to help you. Ah, but it hurts. Ah, but it hurts. Let me encourage you. The more it hurts, the deeper the hurt, the bigger the victory that's coming. The bigger the victory that's coming. He's not helping you for nothing. Let's keep going. Therefore, I was provoked with that generation and said, they always go astray in their what? Heart. They have not known my ways. So you can be doing everything right on the outside. And God is looking at your heart like, yeah. I'm trying to extract that iniquity from you. I'm trying to extract that way of thinking from you. I'm trying to extract that mindset from you. Sure, everything you're doing on the outside looks great. You're doing the right thing, man. Ah, but God is shaking his head at you. It all seems right. It all sounds right. I've said this here before. God doesn't care about your optics. God absolutely does not care about your optics. He cares about your heart. So you, s you keep doing all the right things and your heart is filthy. And you ain't letting them in to change nothing. But you, you, you keep going on and, and fooling some of us. Thinking you 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 doing everything you're supposed to do. But you ain't fooling him. And you know what he says? I'll wait. You gonna go around that mound again. You gonna go around again. You know it's a hard pill to swallow. 
when you realize that the word I could have been useful and actually keep you from delay. Why am I not progressing in my career? Why am I still at the same place that I've been? How come I haven't progressed? All of a sudden you get an impression. Am I missing something? Maybe I'm missing something. I, w gee, I wonder if I'm missing something. You just got an impression. You just got an impression. No evidence. Notice. No evidence. Just an impression. Now, I have to decide if I'm going to acknowledge and recognize the impression of the Holy Spirit or I'll just allow it to pass me by. This is going to deliver somebody in here. Because the reason you're stuck is because the impression come, you missed it. You absolutely missed it. Those who have ears, let them hear. Are you hearing me? God is speaking to somebody right now. Clean your ears out. Yeah, I get it. You're an adult. You got responsibilities. You got bills. You, get you think God don't know that. So you keep doing your dance. And God's like, I'll wait. I'll wait till she gets serious. I'll wait till he gets serious. I'll wait till they get serious. We ain't here to play. I'll wait. I ain't here to play. You keep doing your thing. Is there one more there? As I swore in my wrath, they will not enter my rest. Ooh, there's that word. Rest. If you're in here and you're stressed, if you're in here and you're anxious, if you're in here and you're, you've been consumed by worry, God put this on the screen so you could see it. There's an open door right now. He wants you to enter into that. Holy Spirit, right now, bring to remembrance the word that Jesus gave to your people, to your children. Bring to remembrance. Just close your eyes for a second. Just close your eyes for a second. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Bring to their remembrance by impression the word that Jesus spoke to them the word that Jesus spoke to their heart the word that Jesus spoke to their heart the word that Jesus spoke to their heart bring to their remembrance what you have spoken no more hypotheticals Give it to them. See, this teaching is going to be so much more powerful to you when that word comes to you. Holy Spirit, touch them right now. Touch them right now. Touch them right now. Bring to their, to their mind remembrance of what you said 20 years ago, 40 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 minutes ago, 5 months ago, 6 months ago, 10 hours ago, last night, yesterday morning. Friday, Sunday, right now. Bring to their remembrance what you've spoken. Holy Spirit, I believe you want some of these people to enter into your rest. Those who are willing to take it. Those who are willing to go by faith based on the impression that came to them. I believe you want those who are ready to enter into your rest today. For those of you that are taking this seriously, God wants you to enter into a place of rest. You will no longer strive for nothing. Because what's in you will be more powerful than what's going on around you. The assignment on your life will be to help those who are drowning because they haven't learned this truth. Why do you think things have been so hard for you? Who is God having you prepare the way for? 
Do you know what John the Baptist ate? Who did he prepare the way for? Can you hear me? Let's keep going. You know what? When God's word just does his thing, you just get out of the way. You just get out of the way. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. You see the compassion in that? There's so much compassion there. It's not too late for you, by the way. See that spirit of condemnation? I know it's too late for you. It's too late for you. No, it's, you missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Too late for you. Open up your mouth. Cast that thing down. It's a lie. Cast it down. Cast it down. For the good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by faith with those who listened. I'm going to read that one more time. Some of you, you're, you're getting it. You just need to hear it one more time. For good news came to us just as to them. But that message they heard did not benefit them because they were not united by what? Faith. With those who listened. Those who have an ear, let them hear. Impressions of the Spirit impressions of the spirit let's get very tangible and practical I'm going to call up uh, Ellie and she's going to share a testimony because I believe an impression of the spirit came to her and she acted on it come on up here Ellie she's going to share quickly and uh the Holy see we're taking our time with this we're taking our time with this because you weren't supposed to leave this service the same sorry I'm, I'm sorry I'm about to ruin your schedule today I don't know what you had planned after this but the Holy Spirit has other plans I'm here to tell you the Holy Spirit has other plans whatever plans you think you had you have an opportunity right now to respond to what the Holy Spirit is saying in this place right now. Ah, I pray to God that ears are open. Go ahead, Ellie. Yeah, let me sit down. <laughs> um, this is just a, a small, well, technically any testimony can be big, whether you feel it's small or not. So, um, to me it's big. So, um, as you guys some of you guys knew I had worked at Fun Spot. Um, I had gotten fired from there, um, but it's okay. <laughs> um, and eventually, um, yeah, I was, uh, I had prayed to the Lord during Fun Spot, and I was like, I'm like kind of getting tired of this job. I, I want to leave. I want to do something, but I want to find a job first, and then I'll leave. Um, I never put in that work to find another job. So the Lord was like, all right. You didn't want to do it. You told me you wanted to, but you didn't do anything about it. So I got fired from a uh, fun spot. So then that's what made me put in that work to find a new job. <laughs> Sorry. Um, like seeing how he works just like is amazing. Um, so then I had started feeling doubt because I wasn't sure if I could find a job. And one night, um, I had to use the bathroom, <laughs> but I was praying to the Lord, and I was like, Lord, five jobs. I'm going to apply to five, and you do it with your will. Like, it's in your hands. I'm not going to do anything about it, because I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so, um, five jobs, and um, out of all five, only one replied back to me. 
And that's how I knew. I was like, all right, one, thank you, Jesus, one. Um, at first, it was a phone interview, and I prayed about that. And um, they wanted me for a face-to-face interview. Um, and I told them in that interview, I was like, you guys were the only one that reached back. And they were like, wow, really? And anyway, um, that was the only job that reached back to me. And um, for context, it's as a lifeguard at a hotel. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but at orientation, this is kind of what, like, the, the needle, I guess. I, I forgot the expression. Um, the... HR rep that was giving us the, um, that was leading the orientation was giving information about the hotel, that hotel. First it started with the history of everything, and then she got to the the details of the hotel itself. And um, she ended that um, detail, she, she ended uh, the that section of the orientation by saying the number of rooms and there was 777. <laughs> and that's how many. <laughs> um, and I, this is just my second job, but um, when you put, like, faith, that's it, just faith. Um, and um, I, just, I just wanted a job, honestly. I just, I wanted something to keep me going because I don't feel like, I don't like feeling lazy. I'm the type that likes to be on my feet. And when I feel lazy, that's a way the enemy likes to attack. And um, I don't like that at all. So I, I've been fighting recently. Um, the enemy didn't want me to give this testimony. <laughs> um, I had to work last Sunday. I was supposed to give it last Sunday. So um, here I am giving it today. <laughs> I did it, um, but uh, actually, that's not the last thing. <laughs> I got home that same day, and I'm just cleaning out my bag. And this is the funniest part about it. Thank you. <laughs> um, I had pulled out a receipt, a receipt um, from stuff that I bought at all these for my parents, and that receipt was seventeen dollars and seventy-seven cents. <laughs> like, the Lord is so cool. <laughs> I, I saw the receipt and I was like, you're so swag, just like that. <laughs> That's how I said it. Um, but yeah, I know it's, this is just my second job, <laughs> but um, I just, he has my back. That's basically what I'm saying. Um, so um, saying this out loud and to you guys is kind of helping me because doubt has been really trying to get on me. Um, trying to steer me away from the Lord, actually, <laughs> like completely, like, are you sure this is real? Um, I mean, you prayed to him, but like, is he really hearing you? So, um, yeah, that's what I've been struggling with. Um, but, um, I'm here to tell you today that I did this testimony. I said it and I rebuked the spirit of doubt and fear because he has no place. I'm, I'm strong in the Lord. And I will always remain. And um, there's nothing he can do about it. No matter how hard he can try to take me away, he won't. And that's my testimony. <laughs> hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's great if you guys got something from, from what she said. I know she got something from what she said. I. I. You got to speak. You got to speak. David said it, said it like this. I will encourage myself in the Lord. When that impression comes to you, when that impression comes to you, 
And for some of you in this room right now, the Holy Spirit has brought to your remembrance what he said to you. I don't care if you have to do it under your breath. Rebuke that spirit of doubt like she just did. There's a mental game happening in, in somebody's mind in here right now. Right now. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. Rebuke it. What you in church for if you can't open your mouth and, and speak and rebuke something? What, like, what are we doing? What are we really doing? Come on. We're going to stand and we're going to pray. And the Holy Spirit is going to do something. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Center your heart on the Lord Jesus. This is you and the Lord Jesus. Remember the word I. How am I going to respond? How am I going to accept? How am I going to acknowledge? How am I going to step up? How am I going to step back? How am I going to step out? How am I going to step in to the thing that the Lord Jesus has for me? You don't have to miss it. You don't have to miss it. Can somebody hear? You don't have to miss it. You don't. That's why God is speaking to you right now. He wants to bring to your remembrance because it's time to act. It's time to act. It's time to act. It's time to act. Repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Today, I understand the impression of your spirit. Lord, bring to my remembrance what you have spoken to me. What you have spoken to my spirit. Lord Jesus, I use the authority that you've given me to cast out the spirit of doubt, to cast out the spirit of fear, to cast out the spirit of self condemnation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Clear my mind. Clear my subconscious mind of all lies from the enemy. Purify my mind, O oh God. Cleanse me, O oh God, so that I can receive, so that I can respond, so that I can act upon what you have shown me so that I can know that your promises are there for me are there for me are there for me give the Lord Jesus a hand give the Lord Jesus a hand This is a moment some of you need to press in a little bit more. You need to press in a little bit more. You need to press in a little bit more. For some of you, some of you are going to get out of your seat and you're going to respond. And if you step out, God will see it as an act of faith. God will see it as you acknowledging Don't do anything because I'm telling you to. Let the Lord speak to you. Let the Lord speak to you. Don't mind me. 
This isn't for everybody. This isn't for everybody. The Lord is impressing upon some of you by his spirit. You're going to step out of your seat. You're going to respond. That act of faith will impress upon you what he has spoken. Don't leave here today without getting what you came for. What you're now realizing, oh, this is what I actually came for. Don't leave this place without knowing that you know, 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 that you know. His impression upon you. So you know what to do when you leave from here tomorrow. The worst thing you can do this year is to go throughout the year with no direction. I'm just going to live and, you know, we'll see what happens. No. There's no such thing as blind faith, y'all. No, doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Faith comes because you know. You know, you may not know the how, but you know the what. But you know the what. Don't leave here today without knowing the what. The Holy Spirit will show you how to get there. And today you've learned how to be cognizant and aware of the impression of the Spirit. So we're going to join into worship. Some of you are going to respond. The Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. He's going to help you. He's going to deliver you from the place that you're in to the place that he wants to take you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I, I just wanted to say before we go into the song, what is the point of worshiping him if we're not going out in the world and we're living as though we're worshiping him? And what I mean by that is, are we honoring him in the things that we do? Like the song I sung, I Just Love You, and the song they played. A lot of us, we want to love him, and we want to give him the thanks that he's given us. We want to give him our gratitude. But we have, in order to do that, we have to be surrendered to him. And that's what the song is, I Surrender.
his tongues. The battle's in our mind. Everybody in here, you got a battle in your mind. You may not vocalize it to nobody that's next to you, but you got a battle that's going on.
touch you. He's going to help you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Living waters. 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 Next level. Next level. Preparation. Start preparing. Start preparing. Next level. Next level. Shatiana Maka Soto Sotiana Masa. Shatiana Maka Soto Soto. one out there. I'm speaking to you. You've been stubborn for a while. In fact, God has resisted you. He's resisted you. You're wondering why things aren't going in the direction that they should be. You do all of these things to try and get ahead and it's not getting you anywhere. God is giving you an opportunity. I beg of you by the mercies of God, drop the stubbornness. If you really want to be changed, I rebuke that spirit of arrogance right now in the name of Jesus. 
I rebuke that spirit. I already know what time it is. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Allow the person to come forward. Allow the person to come forward. I don't know who that word is for. God has resisted you in everything. Because of one thing, you haven't surrendered. You haven't. God's only revealing this to you because he wants to bring you to where he is. To give you hope and a future. Not to condemn you. To help you. To help you. Drop the stubbornness. Drop it. It's not serving you. It never served you. It never will serve you. Lord, give them ears. Give them ears. Give them ears. Give them ears. Absolutely pointless to leave here not knowing his direction, not knowing his path, not knowing his word to you. Let him speak. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit.
Thank you, Jesus. Secrets are a killer. Secrets are poison. They're death. The moment you let that thing leave your lips in confession, there's a healing available to you. There's a healing available to you. There's a healing available to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for those who have responded and will continue to respond. Don't believe the lie that you got to wait till next Sunday. You can respond the moment you get home. You can respond in your car. You can respond at your job. You can respond in front of your kids. You can respond in front of your spouse. Any way, any time, any how. You can respond. choose to what? Respond. Lord, we give you thanks for your mercies that are new every morning. I thank you, Lord, for the healing that is taking place even now in the hearts and the minds of your people. Help us to surrender, Lord, to the word that we hear from you, to the impression that we receive from you. Ah, Lord, give us true humility. We don't want the fake stuff. Bring us into alignment with true humility. Open the door wide open. By your mercy, O oh God, even encourage us as we walk through. It's scary to walk through. It can be very scary to walk through. And that spirit of fear is waiting. Waiting to pounce. In fact, many of you, he's already pounced. He's in your head right now. So that's why you have to open up your mouth and pray. Open up your mouth and speak to it. I don't know who this is for. Sometimes your prayer is of no effect because you're praying to God and God is looking at you and saying, no, speak to the thing that I've given you dominion over. Speak to the spirit that I've given you dominion over. I've given you authority over Stop talking to me. We, we've had our conversation. Speak to it now. I'm backing you. Don't you believe that? I'm backing you. Speak to it now. I can't do nothing until you speak. I can't do nothing until you speak. You have to speak. Tell it to go. Tell self-doubt to go. Tell condemnation to go. Tell fear to go. Tell anxiety to go. Tell rage and anger to go. Tell complacency to go. Tell laziness to go. Tell suicidal thoughts to go. Whatever the name is. Whatever the name is, speak to it. Speak to it. It's time to catch up. It's time to catch up to what God has given you dominion over. 
let your mind, let your understanding catch up to what he's given you the authority and dominion over. Hmm. I guess we do the tithes and offerings. Brother sat in the back this morning and God opened my eyes to certain things and I noticed the young the adults the young adults the kids they're getting attacked as parents you gotta start praying for your kids young adults you guys gotta start stepping up kids you guys gotta start stepping up praying even more because the devil knows how powerful you guys are and that's why he's doing what he's doing but just like the saying says if you ain't got haters you ain't popping it's the other way around and the devil knows that he knows how smart you guys are you guys are a brand you guys are a brand you guys are a brand of Jesus Christ you guys are a brand of God you guys need to stand on that. Don't let nobody talk you down. Pray out the anxiety. It's not real. Pray out the anxiety. It's not real. You stand on something. Pray for your friends. Pray for everybody around you. And you're going to have to keep praying. Parents, you guys, we got to open up our eyes a lot more. I know we get, man. Whew, God is talking to me right now. I know we get sidetracked with certain things. bills trying to provide and sometimes we forget our own as parents we also need to step up and go above and beyond for God too to you, Lord, for you to give us guidance and clearance on everything you have to offer us, Lord. I know sometimes we go through hard things and we wonder why we're going through them, Lord. But I know it's just a lesson. You're the light. You're the light of darkness. You're the light of darkness. And any way that we go, we fall, we tumble, we roll. You're always there no matter what, not judging us, Lord. And we give us your heart, Lord. We give us your soul, Lord. We give us your mind, Lord. We give us your body, Lord. We are a temple. We are a brand. We stand on faith. We stand on faith. Without faith, there's nothing. Without you, Lord, there's nothing. Continue growing us, Lord. Continue showing us, Lord. try to go ahead and do the tithe and offering and then sometimes we feel like we fall short if you don't fall short because guess what when you reach your mind and your heart that means that God is doing something he's making changes he's making waves and it's not probably the way you want it to go but you keep praying on to the Lord and letting them know I want to go ahead and tithe the proper way so bless me Lord so I could do the right thing by you Lord Change my heart, Lord. Change my soul, Lord. And continue let me grow in your faith. Because I know you're the faith that I need in my life. You're the light that will continue glowing that will never go out no matter what. I just want to thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen.
Pastor Josh and his family safe and sound. Amen. Amen. The Traveling Mercies were here. He's here with us. He'll be with us again next Sunday. He's going to join us as well. Um, so that's it. I want to say thank you to the visitors. David, you came back. It's nice seeing you again. We also have Grant. Hi, Grant. So it's nice seeing you. Hopefully it won't be the last time that you come. Amen. He was invited by the ladies. And then we also had Julian, which was invited by Astrid, but they had to leave. Amen. But we have visitors today, so you're more than welcome. We're very happy when we get visitors in the church. Amen. Um, we're going to ask that you rise. Amen. If there's anything else, Pastor Josh. No. Okay, so let's see who's going to lead us out in prayer today. Thank you for this beautiful day, a day of rejoicing and thanksgiving, a day that you have wake us up to see another day, and Heavenly Father, we'll always be grateful for it. I want you to cleanse our heart and our soul help us to be Christ-like. Heavenly Father, without you, we're nothing. And your blessing abide in us. We want to continue to grow, to love each other, and to surround ourselves with growth and love that your Holy Spirit will continue to manifest in our lives. Thank you for my family, my church family, for those who is here and those who are not here, and that you will continue to heal our broken hearts and to heal our body from the outside in. Because Jesus... You only, we only see the outside, but we don't know what is going on on the inside. So we are asking you to heal us from inside so your glory and your grace and your love can show. Thank you, dear Father, for bringing us here together, not only today, but for a very, very long time until we meet you. Beautiful prayer, man.